Hello children, this is for Form 4 Chemistry. In this video, you will find out ionic bonding, covalent bonding and metallic bonding. Objectives So after discussing this part, you should be able to fulfill these objectives. So first one, understand how ions are formed by electron loss or gain and write formulae for compounds formed between ions and draw dot and cross diagrams to show the formation of ionic compounds and covalent bonds in diatomic molecules like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and inorganic molecules like water, ammonia, carbon dioxide and organic molecules containing up to two carbon atoms like methane, ethane, ethene and to understand ionic and covalent bonding in terms of electrostatic attraction and to understand giant ionic lattice and giant covalent structures and to understand physical properties of ionic and covalent compounds and also to understand metallic bonding in terms of electrostatic attraction and also to explain typical physical properties of metals. So first we will see what are the types of chemical bonding. So there are two types of chemical bonding. They are ionic bonding and covalent bonding. So when atoms gain or lose electrons to attain noble gas configuration, it forms an ionic bond. And when atoms share electrons to attain noble gas configuration, it forms a covalent bonding. So what is noble gas configuration? The group zero elements in the periodic table are known as noble gases because they are almost completely unreactive as their outer shell is full and there is no tendency to lose or gain or share electrons. So the elements in group zero have eight electrons in their outer shell apart from the helium. So helium has two outer electrons which is called as duplet configuration and all the other noble gases have an octet configuration where eight outer electrons are there. So now let's see why do atoms react because atoms of most other elements are reactive they do not have noble structure their outer layer shells are not fully completed so atoms of the elements lose or gain or share outer electrons to attain that noble gas configuration and form compounds so here let's see what is an ion so from the first picture it shows the structure of an atom. So there the number of protons present in the nucleus is equal to the number of electrons present in the outer shells. So therefore we call an atom as a electrically neutral. So when it comes to the ion what will happen? An atom loses or gain electron to form an ion. So therefore what happened? The number of protons present in the nucleus not equal to number of electrons in the outer shell. The electron number of electron becomes changed. So therefore ion is a charged particle. So Iron can be positively or 
negatively charged. So the positively charged ions are called cations and negatively charged ions are called anions. So let's see the formation of cations and anions. So when atoms of metals loses electrons to form positively charged ions, it is called as a cation. Then when the atoms of non-metals gain electrons to form negatively charged ions, it is called anion. So here you can see an example for cation. So let's see the formation of sodium plus ion. So sodium atom has 11 electrons. So and there has a one electron in the outer shell. So this electron is very unstable one. So in order to become more stable atom, it loses that electron from the outer shell so and form the noble gas configuration so therefore when it loses one electron the number of proton the net charge become plus one so this is this becomes a positively charged ion so then we call this sodium plus ion so this is an example for an ion so here you can see the formation of chloride ion so in the neutral chlorine atom it consists of 17 protons and 17 electrons so the positive charges will cancel out from the negative charge so what so they are uh, you can see there are seven electrons at the outer layer so if one electron will receive to chlorine atom it will form it will have the noble gas configuration so it is more stable structure than this one so what will always chlorine atom try to do is somehow it will try to fill this electron so if uh, this neutral atom accept one electron the number of protons in the ion becomes less than number of electrons so the extra electron gives an ion their overall negative charge so So here let's identify ionic bonding. So ionic bonds are formed between metals and non-metals. Normally metals are present in the periodic table group 1 and group 2 elements like sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium and there are so many other metals also. So then uh, we uh, say the non-metals some examples are uh, in the periodic table group 7 elements like fluorine chlorine and group 6 elements like oxygen sulfur are some of the example for non-metals so actually ionic bonding is a strong electrostatic attraction between positive and negative ions so here yeah, actually what happened is the electrons of one atom are transferred permanently to another atom so the atom that loses electrons become a positively charged ion or cation while that other ion which gains electrons becomes a negatively charged ion so here you can see the formation of ionic bonding from an example of sodium chloride so 
in the sodium atom the electron which is in the outer shell is very unstable one so it will always try to remove that electron and get the noble gas configuration and chlorine also chlorine atom also like that it also not a stable one because if it get an electron from somewhere it also receive that noble gas configuration so what will happen uh, if uh, sodium and chlorine atoms are uh, close together what will happen that one electron from sodium atom will remove and it will gain by chlorine atom so the sodium atom will now form into sodium plus ion or cation and chlorine atom becomes to a chloride ion an ion so let's see dot and cross diagram so dot and cross diagram represent the transfer of electron from metal atom to non metal atom so electrons from one atom are shown as dots and the electrons from the other atom are shown as crosses for example when uh, sodium reacts with chlorine the electrons transfer from sodium atom to chlorine atom and it will represent as this and so uh, the charges of the each ion is displayed at the upper right corner of the each atom so this is the way how the dot and cross diagram should be drawn so this is an example for ionic bonding here you can see the formation of magnesium chloride so uh, this formation can be thought as a reaction between magnesium metal and chlorine gas so here uh, since this magnesium atom is a metal in group 2 it tends to lose its two outer shell valence electrons to achieve its uh, complete octet so it donates its valence electrons to two chlorine atoms and then it forms to magnesium 2 plus ion and therefore by receiving or by gaining those two electrons by those two chlorine atoms they also can complete their octets and forms two chloride ions so there are what happens the opposite charges of magnesium 2 plus and two chloride ions attract them each other and forms an ionic bond so here this is another example uh, it shows how lithium fluoride ionic compound is formed so here the electron of the outer shell of lithium will transfer into fluorine atom and forms lithium plus ion and fluorine fluoride ion and by the opposite charges of lithium plus ion and fluoride ion they will attract them each other and forms the ionic bond so now let's see why do atoms react because atoms of most other elements are reactive they do not have noble structure their outer layer shells are not fully completed so atoms of the elements lose or gain 
or share outer electrons to attain that noble gas configuration and form compounds. So, charges of ions. So, when you are going to deduce a chemical formula of an ionic compound, so you cannot work out without knowing the charges of some ions. So, therefore, you have to learn them. So, some of the ions that you need to be learned are shown in this table. So, here the positive ions have shown in green color and negative ions are shown in the ash color so here uh, you should know that all metals form positive ions so some of the example on here given some of the examples so zinc forms zinc 2 plus ion and silver forms ag plus ions and hydrogen forms H plus ions and ammonium forms NH4 plus ions. So, apart from that, there are some other uh, positive ions that you should know. That in a lead oxide, lead forms lead 2 plus ions and iron 3 chloride, it forms, it has iron 3 plus ions. And copper 2 sulfate contains copper 2 plus iron. And uh, so uh, when it comes to negative ions. So negative ions are the most commonly used negative ions. When you are dealing with chemical formula, uh, nitrate ion. Nitrate ion, NO3 minus ion. And hydroxide ion, OH minus ion. And carbonate, CO3, 2 minus. And sulfate, SO4, 2 minus ion. So here, you should remember that not to confuse ions such as sulfate and sulfide. This is one example only. So, uh, most students make mistakes as they don't look carefully at the word endings. So, without looking word endings, they directly go to start write the formula. So, be careful about that. Don't confuse ions. So, now let's take this example. So, in a copper 2 sulfide and copper 2 sulfate. So, uh, in copper sulfide, it contains only copper and sulfur. So, any ide, ide endings mean that it there's no anything complicated there. So, so uh, in the copper sulfate, example so there it contains only uh, it contains copper sulfur and oxygen only so the eight ending means there's there is oxygen uh, but there may be some other as well but oxygen there there is oxygen so you should not Confuse those ions. Here you are going to learn how to deduce formula for an ionic compound. So here are the steps you should follow when you are writing and balancing the formula. So here you are given example. Find the formula for sodium oxide. So first what you should do you should identify the cation 
and its charge. So actually cation should be the least electronegative ion. So normally cations are metals and they are located on the left hand side of the periodic table. So here in this example sodium oxide the cation is sodium. So you can see here from this uh, periodic table uh, I have uh, highlighted it in the group 1. So it is located in group 1 and forms a sodium plus 1 ion. So the charge is plus 1. So, and then you should identify the anion also. So here, so anion is the most electronegative ion. So normally anions include halogens and nonmetals. So here according to this example, the anion is oxide. So it is formed from oxygen. So oxygen belongs to group 6. So here you can see uh, the charge of oxygen is minus 2. So after uh, identifying these, what you have to do is you have to uh, write the cation first and then write the anion. So here sodium should be written in first and then oxide. So then you have to adjust the subscript of cation and anion. So the net charge should be zero. So in this example, uh, you now you have, uh, I think you have got that idea. Sodium should be written first and then oxygen. So when you are balancing the charges, so there are two negative charges on the oxygen and one positive charge on sodium. So what should we do now to balance this? So in order to balance this, uh, you should add two sodium ions. So all together now there are plus two and uh, from oxygen we already have 2 minus minus 2. So uh, now what will happen? Now plus 2 and minus 2 all together net charge is 0. So now we can build up the formula. So sodium 2 ions and oxygen or oxide 1 Ion. So the formula should be Na2O. So let's see the second example. So here you have to find out the formula for calcium oxide. So here also you have to follow the same procedure. First you have to identify what is the cation and its charge. So calcium and oxygen is there. So calcium is in group 2. If you look at the periodic table, you can see calcium is located in group 2. It's a metal. So definitely you can figure out it as the cation. So then you have to identify what is the charge on it. So normally group 2 elements forms ions 2 plus ions. So then the charge should be 2 plus. So then let's identify what's the anion and its charge. So here then you we now already we identified cation. Then definitely anion should be the other one, oxygen. So, oxygen is in gr group 6. So, you can see from the periodic table, group 6 elements 
forms normally 2 minus ions. So they have uh, their charge is minus 2. So what you have to do here now you have to you have to adjust the formula. You have to uh, now you have the two charges and two symbols with you. So first you have to write the symbol of cation. So calcium and then the anion symbol oxygen and then you have to adjust the subscript of both ions. Normally you you change those two values as seen in this figure. So when you are changing the, those two values here you get Ca2 O2 as the formula but this is wrong so what's the wrong with this you always you should always write the smallest whole number ratio between cation and anion which balances the net charge so here you can write, rewrite this as CaO if you are reduce this into the smallest number. So the answer should be CaO. So now let's see what are the ionic structures. So all ionic compounds form crystals that consist of lattices. Lattice is what? Lattice is a regular array of particles. So, an ionic lattice is held together by strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the oppositely charged ions. These forces act in all directions in the lattice are called ionic bonding. Here you can see the structure of sodium chloride lattice. So here from the first picture you can see sodium chloride crystal and from the second picture you can see how sodium ions and chloride ions arranged alternate with each other and the third picture you can see three dimensional arrangement of sodium ions and chloride ions. So here you can see the three dimensional ball and stick model for the sodium chloride ionic lattice. So here uh, the red balls represent sodium ions and green ones for chloride ions. So each sodium ion is surrounded by six chloride ions and each chloride ion also surrounded by six sodium ions. So uh, these lines in this diagram are not bonds. So they are just show the arrangement of ions. So normally those ions are touching each other. So uh, this structure of sodium chloride is described as a giant ionic lattice. So we use this word giant uh, here not in the sense of big but to describe it's a structure where there are no individual molecules. So all the sodium ions in the structure attract all the chloride ions. So we cannot pick out sodium chloride molecules. There are no individual molecules. So the bonding in a giant ionic lattice uh, it extends throughout the structure in all directions. So there is no limit to number of the particles. So
let's see the physical properties of ionic substances. So ionic compounds have high melting and boiling points. It's because they have strong electrostatic forces of attraction. So a lot of energy need to supply to break the strong electrostatic forces in the ionic lattices. So then the ionic compounds are crystalline. Most ionic compounds form crystal and uh, not the amorphous materials. And then uh, ionic compounds are brittle. So like charges repel, so crystal also split itself apart. So then uh, the ionic compounds are mostly soluble in water. They are insoluble in organic solvents. And also ionic compounds are very hard materials. So then electrical conductivity of ionic substances. So normally ionic compounds do not conduct electricity in solid state. They conduct electricity in molten and aqueous states. So it's because in the molten and equal states mobile ions are present so they are the responsible parts for conduct electricity then the covalent bonding so what is covalent bond it's a chemical link between two atoms in which the electron pairs are shared between them so, a covalent bond can be termed as a molecular bond. And covalent bond form between two non-metal atoms with identical or relatively close electronegativity values like Cl2 molecule. They have identical electronegativity values. So let's see the covalent bond in hydrogen molecule. So hydrogen atom has only one electron. So in order to make hydrogen molecule, two hydrogen atoms will share each of their one electron forming a covalent bond. So by sharing these two electrons, the shells touch together. So each hydrogen atom can count two electrons in its outer shell. So these field outer shells with their shared electrons are now stable. So the hydrogen molecule, this hydrogen molecule will not further react with other hydrogen atoms. So and this pair of shared electrons between two hydrogen atoms forms a single covalent bond. Uh, here there are no ions because electrons are not transferred from one atom to another. Only electrons are shared. So let's see octet rule. So this octet rule refers to the tendency of atoms which prefers to have eight electrons in their valence shell. So when atoms have fewer electrons than 8, they tend to react and form more stable compounds and obtain the noble gas configuration. So they can share electrons. Now here let's see the covalent bonding in a hydrogen chloride molecule. Here also similar to somewhat similar to hydrogen molecule. So the thing is their hydrogen atom is 
share in electron with chlorine atom so they are uh, in the outer shell of chlorine atom there are seven electrons so in order to uh, fill its outer layer it needs only one electron so it it fulfill that requirement from hydrogen atom so hydrogen also needs an only one electron hydrogen also get that electron from chlorine so both are sharing these uh, two electrons together so let's see the covalent bond present in methane ammonia and water so first we will look about methane so in methane there is one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms so normally a carbon atom has four electrons in its outer layer outer shell so by sharing one electron with each hydrogen atoms as you can see in this picture carbon can have eight electrons in its outer shell and hydrogen also can have two electrons in its outer shell so therefore carbon forms four covalent bonds in here one with each hydrogen atom so the structural formula of methane is ch4 so then ammonia so in the ammonia it is composed of one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms so in hydrogen atom there are five electrons in its outer shell so therefore it needs three other electrons to have eight electrons in its outer shell so in that case ammonia forms three covalent bonds with hydrogen as you can see this picture so then water so water how water has composed from one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms so normally oxygen atom has six electrons in its outer shell and so therefore it needs two other electrons to share and to have eight electrons in its outer layer so in water oxygen forms two covalent bonds with hydrogen atoms so here you can see the covalent bond in in ethane molecule so this is somewhat complicated than the previous ones so the bonding is actually similar to methane so the specialty in here is there is another bond between carbon to carbon covalent bond as well so let's see the multiple covalent bondings so first we will see what are the double bonding so here as the first example we will discuss about oxygen molecule so oxygen molecule contains from two oxygen atoms so each oxygen atom has six electrons in its outer shell so in so if those two oxygen atoms combine together both of them will share two electrons from each this means 
that each atom then each atom will have eight electrons in its outer shell so here from this picture you can count now how many electrons are present in the outer layer all together the yellow ones and green ones if you count together uh, each each oxygen atom there are now eight electrons so then what will happen since uh, each of them share two electrons this forms a double covalent bond which is normally said as double bond so the next example is carbon dioxide molecule so carbon dioxide is formed from one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms so oxygen atom has already have six electrons in its outer shell and carbon atom has four so each oxygen atom will share two electrons with the carbon atom so two double bonds are formed between carbon and the two oxygen atoms so all atoms have now eight electrons in their outer shell here you can clearly understand it by this picture so let's see octet rule so this octet rule refers to the tendency of atoms which prefers to have eight electrons in their valence shell so when atoms have fewer electrons than eight they tend to react and form more stable compounds and obtain the noble gas configuration so they can share electrons then the covalent bonding in nitrogen molecule so nitrogen molecule is made out from two nitrogen atoms so each nitrogen atom has five electrons in its outer shell so if nitrogen atoms are combined together both will share three electrons from each that means in order to fill eight electrons it needs only three from extra so therefore uh, those three shared pairs of electrons form triple covalent bonds which normally said as triple bond so here we will see the molecules where the central atom does not have eight electrons in its outer shell so the first example is boron trifluoride boron trifluoride so it is the structural formula is bf3 so actually what happens here uh, the boron has five electrons now so in the outer layer it has only three electrons so so boron can share only these three electrons but um, when uh, fluorine the, in the case of fluorine it has not any problem from this the thing is with the boron so what happened here uh, the, those three outer electrons of boron will combine with three fluorine atoms and uh, the fluorine how however it will gain an additional electron and satisfy its octet so but boron only have has a 
six electrons in its outer shell. So uh, there's another example for this case. Uh, it is sulfur dioxide. So in the case of sulfur dioxide, around sulfur there are ten electrons. So intermolecular forces. So up until now we have discussed how covalent bonds are formed by sharing electrons. So this is called as intramolecular force. So we know that how atoms in a molecule are held together. But why do molecules in a liquid or solid stick around each other? So have you noticed what makes molecule attracted to one another? So these forces are called the intermolecular forces. So those are generally somewhat weaker than intramolecular forces. So from these pictures also you can see what is the intramolecular force and what is the intermolecular force. So normally the simple molecular structures has low melting and boiling point. The reason behind that is it does not require much energy to break weak intermolecular forces of attraction. So normally when a liquid boils or when a solid melts, no covalent bonds are broken. Only intermolecules are broken. So melting and boiling points increases with the relative molar mass increasing. So the reason is the intermolecular forces of attraction become more stronger when the relative molar mass also increasing. So here from this table you can see that. So here uh, from the periodic table you know that uh, fluorine to iodine uh, those are halogen. So those uh, uh, halogens if you get the relative molar mass uh, when you go down from the group the relative molar mass also get increased so so here you can notice that the melting point what happened to the melting point the melting point also increases with the increasing of molar mass so boiling point it also increasing it begins from, from minus 188 and it ends up with positive 184 so see how values are how different So let's see the physical properties of covalent compounds. So normally covalent compounds do not conduct electricity. This is because the molecules don't have overall electrical charge and all the electrons are tightly packed in the atoms or in the covalent bonds. So they are not able to move from molecule to molecule so and also uh, their melting and boiling points increases with the increasing of relative molar mass and covalent compounds are tend to be insoluble in water but there are some exceptions also uh, so an example ethanol ammonia and hydrogen chloride HCl are dissolving water 
most oftenly they are soluble in organic solvents so here this is another example uh, it shows how lithium fluoride ionic compound is formed so here the electron of the outer shell of lithium will transfer into fluorine atom and forms lithium plus ion and fluorine fluoride ion and by the opposite charges of lithium plus ion and fluoride ion they will attract them each other and forms the ionic bond to graphite graphite is also a form of carbon it has a layered structure so graphite is a soft material it has high melting and boiling points and this conducts electricity so one main difference between diamond and graphite is graphite conduct electricity but diamond does not conduct electricity so then we will move so now let's see what are the ionic structures so all ionic compounds form crystals that consist of lattices lattice is what lattice is a regular array of particles so an ionic lattice is held together by strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the oppositely charged ions these forces act in all directions in the lattice are called ionic bonding metallic bonding so the metallic bond is somewhat different from covalent and ionic bonds but the purpose is the same it is to achieve a lower energy state so instead of a bond between two atoms in a metallic bond it shares electrons between many atoms of a metal element so all of the atoms in that small piece of metal are sharing a big pool of valence electrons it is known as c of electrons c of electrons or delocalized electrons delocalized electrons so this big pool is like a free for all in that any valence electron can move to any atom within the material so this holds the structure together now let's see the physical properties of metals so metals are hard and they have high melting points 
and metals conduct electricity when they are in solid or molten state. So, because they have delocalized electrons and they are free to move. And also, metals are malleable. Malleable means they can be hammered into different shapes. So, and also, metals are ductile. It means metal can stretched into thin wires. So, So, hope you have get more knowledge about ionic bonds, covalent bonds and metallic bonds. So, now at the end of these chapters, you have chapter questions. So, now you can try for these chapter questions. So, thank you all for listening.